What's up guys, it's River and today I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your Nikon D7500 by showing you the best photo settings, video setting, the best autofocus settings and how to get around some of the pesky autofocus issues that this camera does have. Plus a bonus tip on how to better organize your files in camera. Yep, in camera. Without further ado, let's get into it. Also, just to let you guys know, there's a link in the description down below for the best deal on this beast of a camera. All right, guys, so here we are looking at the camera. The first thing you want to do is from pretty much anywhere you are in the camera, just hit the menu screen and you will get to the photo shooting options. If you're not there, you can use this little cross tie pad to navigate yourself around. You want to get to the camera thing right there. Also, this is a touch screen, so you can also navigate that way. I'm going to be using the cross tie just because I like the cross tie, but right here you'll see choose imaging area make sure this is set to dx do not set it to this you will lose resolution make sure that's set to ds and then you go to image quality now you have a few options if you want to pick jpeg fine if you're just doing stuff for yourself like it's not professional work it's not like something you're really touching and tweaking the colors jpeg fine is totally fine if you're a hobbyist that's just taking photos on vacation jpeg fine is literally fine but if you're someone that wants to do more professional grade work uh, you can actually go to uh, NEF RAW if you want. You can just shoot RAW. I feel like if you're shooting RAW, you really don't need to shoot JPEG. But sometimes what I prefer doing is shooting JPEG RAW with JPEG Fine. And you also might be thinking, why does JPEG say Fine with a star? If you want, you can pick JPEG with a star. It basically gives you low compression and it's like a higher grade. It's like the ultimate, like the lowest compression you can get on your JPEGs. I've done a few tests and I don't think it makes that much of a difference, but I know some photographers will shoot JPEG instead of RAW. So if you're shooting JPEG to do professional work, JPEG with the star. But um, I find my preferred setting is I'll pick NEF RAW with actually basic JPEG because that way I'm getting my full RAW image and then I'll get basic JPEG just to send it over to the client, have them pick their favorite shots or just show them what we got for the day. Um, but I will pick JPEG with the star because JPEG basic looks hella basic. Also, depending on what settings you're choosing to shoot on, I'm shooting to choose on RAW and JPEG, you want to make sure this is set to L because that's giving you the maximum resolution. You do not want to set this to anything lower. You'll get Your resolution will be bad. Everything will look grainy and just sh like from the 90s. When you go to NEF RAW compression, I actually recommend putting uh, compression off uh, actually, sorry, lossless compressed, which what it does, it, it's a slightly smaller level of compression. You're still getting about the same image size, but you're not really, you won't, it's mathematically lossless. Um, I just try to, when I'm shooting raw, I just try to get the most data I can. When it goes to NEF raw bit depth, always make sure to set this to 14. You're shooting raw, you want to get the most data out of this. Also, another thing that I really recommend doing is ma managing your ISO when it comes to photos. If you hit the ISO button right up here on top, if you turn this dial, you can change your ISO. I recommend never really shooting about a thousand in most like general lighting conditions and never really going above like 3200 to 4000. 6400 is like pushing it. Like that's the maximum and I don't think you should try to hit the maximum if you can help it. I will maybe shoot 3200 if I can't help it and then I think generally I'll try to keep my ISO just hovering around 800 to 1000. That's going to make your images look the cleanest and the best. And also you want to, you'll notice this setting up top, auto ISO sensitivity. You want to make sure that is set to off because what that will do is it'll just randomly ramp up your ISO super high to give you exposure but it'll ruin your images. So want to make sure ISO sensitivity just hovers around 800 to 1000 for most things. 6400 is the max and auto iso is definitely off so next up is settings for video basically you want to hit the menu wherever you are in the camera you get to the shooting menu which is this little box with tripod legs right here it's kind of a weird looking image to be honest but you want to make sure you go to imaging area choose dx and then next you'll get to frame rate and size you want to make sure you pick the right frame rate for what you're shooting 23 or 24 sorry in this case 24 or 25 is basically the right frame rate for something real time if you're going to be recording talking or like an interview that's totally fine but if you want to get something slow-mo something a bit more like cinematic and epic but with no audio because once you do slow-mo audio and slow-mo it sounds 
really slow like this um you want to pick 60 or if you want to shoot 4k you can shoot 4k but it'll, you can pick 4k in 24 25 30 but you'll get a two times crop let me just quickly demonstrate so this is the image in 4k and now this is in 6k or sorry hd but you'll notice i'm kind of zoomed out a little bit and um yeah 4K can be useful, but you'll lack slow-mo, but you'll get higher image clarity. And I wouldn't really recommend using 4K unless you have the appropriate lenses because you will be more punched in because your lens will crop. And, you know, 4K is really useful for like interviews and weddings. So, but, you know, chances are if you are planning to video, you probably know a little bit about that, but hit me up in the comments down below if you have any questions. Next, you wanna to go to movie quality and naturally set this to high. And this is where I see most people mess up. Pick MOV, not MP4, MOV. It's higher bitrate and it will give you better quality for when you're editing. But if you just plan to take these videos, throw them straight onto social media or just Facebook, MP4 is actually better. So depending on what you're doing, pick one of those settings. As I mentioned previously, make sure your auto ISO control is off. Auto ISO is the devil. Um, next, you wanna to go to picture control style. And if you're planning on shooting something that's a bit more cinematic and you want to be able to tweak your colors later this is the profile that i find works best for me in terms of colors you want to go to sharpening and i already have it set but you want to go to sharpening and you want to tweak that sharpening all the way down to basically zero contrast negative two and you want to leave brightness as it is and you want to go to saturation make it that negative two this will give you less information in the image you shoot in camera and it allows you to kind of fill those buckets up later with your own information in post but this is what i found to be the best image profile i guess for shooting but if you don't think you're going to be shooting cinematic work auto i wouldn't really use but standard looks pretty good and so does vivid monochrome if you want to do uh like black and white portrait i think looks kind of meh flat do not use flat it just looks flat and weird and it doesn't really help your image in any way um landscape and portrait i think you can kind of just leave but i think unless you're shooting something neutral for cinematic color grading standard and vivid is pretty much where it's at also guys if you just scroll down all the way to the bottom of the menu you'll see electronic vr i would turn this off electronic vr in this camera specifically is not the greatest it's pretty decent in the five in the canon m50 or like the sony cameras which have i in bit like stabilizing the lens itself sorry the sensor itself but this is electronic VR, it's all software, and uh, it's not that great. I think it kind of makes your image look weird. It kind of makes it look jiggly and bouncy. I would just keep this completely off. All right, guys, so the next thing that we're going to be looking at is autofocus. Now, autofocus is a bit tricky in this camera, and that's why we're going to go over this part in massive, massive detail. So the first thing you want to do is you actually want to go to this button right here, and you'll see like it says AF or M. You want to flip this to AF and that'll put you in autofocus mode. If you want to focus manually, flip this to M. But you'll also notice this thing right here is a little button that's actually clickable. So what you want to do is you want to actually turn on your camera and once it's booted up, you want to hit, and it's a kind of a pain in the butt to, to hit, but you want to hit that button and actually you want to hold it down and your autofocus menu will come up. Now you have two options, autofocus area mode or autofocus mode. What I prefer for photos is AFS, which is AF single. It'll just get one point of autofocus and it'll stick to that until you try to autofocus it again. You can also go to autofocus continuous, we'll track the subject. Um, this is useful if you wanna catch a model and kind of walk, model kind of walking towards you or like sports photography, but I prefer to keep this in AF, AS mode because I prefer to just kind of like catch focus, track with the subject, and then get that perfect shot. But if you need to go into burst mode, AFC is definitely the way to go. AFA is where it'll try to figure out which one you need. I don't think you should rely on the camera to figure that out for you. You should, as a shooter, figure that out on your own. So AFC or AFS is the way to go. And then also you'll see AF area mode. Now area mode is where it's either getting all of the sensor, where if it's a wide triangle, it's getting all of the sensor, or just a single point in the middle or cross type over the most of the middle of the sensor. I prefer sticking with autofocus right in the middle. So I know I'm getting pinpoint sharp focus on whatever I'm looking at. But if you're shooting like street photography or something like that's like a landscape or whatever, 
I'll go with the um, AF wide area mode, but this really depends on what you're shooting. And other than that, that's pretty much it for autofocus. The one thing that I do want to point out to you guys, this autofocus is not the greatest. And the other thing that I want to show you guys that I think will really, really help you guys in terms of uh, autofocus is if you look right here, there's two shortcut buttons, one right here and one right there. The way to program these shortcut buttons is actually you want to go right here to your main menu and you hit I. Then you go to custom control assignment and if you, you can pick either F1 and F2 and I've set them both to this, you can get something called modeling flash. Now when you hit the modeling flash, you have to make sure your flash is on. Just make sure you hit that button right there. You'll actually see this really interesting thing. Um, you probably may or may not been able to see it there, but basically that flash will turn way up. And now that can actually, in, in like a pinch, help you grab focus. Now, if your image is completely dark, you'll actually notice, if I try to autofocus here, this little yellow light will come on. That sometimes can help, but I think sometimes if you're just like in a pinch and you need to get some light in there and that modeling flash just isn't doing it for you, easiest thing to do, throw that thing up and, and grab autofocus while that modeling flash is up and your autofocus will just have just enough exposure to get good autofocus. So that's a neat little like nifty trick that I figured out to better improve this camera's autofocus. So last but not least, let's talk about the drive mode. So right here, if you push this button down and rotate the style, you get S, C, L, C, H. Single, continuous slow, continuous high, and Q, Q and QC is quiet and continuous quiet. Um, those I think are really, they don't really do much. Um, it's not really that quiet. MUP is mirror up mode where it's mostly for astral photography. It's more of an advanced feature, but let's just focus on uh, what I think most of you guys will need, which is single, continuous low, continuous high. Basically, if you go to continuous high, this camera will take a shit ton of shots continuously. And CL is slightly slower. slightly slower. Um, I think if you don't need to shoot continuous high, you'll end up with too many photos if you shoot on continuous high. I recommend CL for most people because you don't want to have to go through like 200 photos. Single is, you know, when you're with the model or with the subject and you know what you're getting, you can kind of keep them in place and just slowly take your photos. Um, these are the three drive modes I recommend you experiment and play around with. I know it's pretty simple, but these drive modes can literally make or break your project if, you, if you're not using the drive mode because you'll either miss shots or get way too many shots. Lastly, I wanna show you guys a really simple trick on how to stay organized with your shoots. A lot of times you'll shoot more than one thing on a card. If you're on a trip, you'll go different places and you'll shoot different subjects in different places on the same card. So basically you wanna go into menu and you wanna hit storage folder. And in storage folder, you can rename your actual uh, file name so let's say i go to cabo new mexico which is sorry cabo mexico which is somewhere i like to go a lot um cabo and then you know just a space and then if i hit okay by the way you gotta love the touch screen on this camera and then right there cabo all my photos will come up as cabo and then you can number them however you like and this way let's say mid shoot uh, you know i get a bunch of photos in Cabo and then mid shoot, I'm like, oh, I went to a different place. I can just go right up here and name it. Uh, let's see, where else would I probably go to? N Y C space space. Okay, so and the rest of your photos will be NYC and you can select how you want to number them. Like, let's say NYC is the seventh place you visited, you can make this seven zero zero. And then all your photos will come out in a certain way. And that way, when you're kind of taking your photos off camera, putting them into your folders on an external hard drive, organizing things, it's just a lot easier than having to go be like, okay, what was the last photo? Because if everything's the last, you're kind of just trying to figure out where one section ends and when the other one begins. But by naming things, you'll stay a lot more organized and it'll be a lot easier. And you can do the same with the video stuff. And what I actually find is sometimes I, I'll name the video stuff one thing and I'll name the the photo stuff, one thing, it just helps me stay much, much more organized. Sometimes I'll even go into the camera and be like, and like name something like, like let's say if I'm doing a makeup thing, I'll just be like, uh, I won't do it right now, but like I'll be like makeup CL, like makeup close up, makeup WW, 
make up wides. So it just really helps you start organizing. If you're someone that's like a beginner photographer or starter photographer, even a hobbyist, it's just helpful to keep your files organized because ultimately you shot all these things, you wanna keep these memories forever. So it, it's kind of a pretty big deal. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the tutorial on the Nikon D7500. If you are interested in picking up this beast of a camera, there's a link in the description down below for the absolute best pricing on this camera, so be sure to check that out. Also, if you have any further questions about this guy, hit me up in the comments down below, and I'll make sure to get back to every single one of you. As always, like and subscribe for future content. Until next time, guys.